So here we're going to solve a few practice problems. Here, question one from the regression section. We have two variables. They are the price variable and the market share for 10 petrol stations. So we can see the data, the observations across here. And the task we have in sub-question one is to calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation for the price variable. The price is, by the way, very sensibly measured in pence per litre. So I'm going to do this in Excel rather than uh, trying too hard by hand, but you should uh, see what needs to be done from the Excel calculations. So here are all the data. If I want the sample mean first of the price, the first thing I do is I calculate the sum and then I divide this result by the number of observations. 134.8. I could, of course, also have used the built-in um, function in Excel. That's the average function. So I could have chosen average and then highlighted all the data and I get exactly the same result, but I'll do it by hand. We want to understand what we're doing. So 134.8, so part 1, so we have the result is 138.4, and that was the average for the price, and what we calculated was 1 over 10. Of the sample size times the sum of all the prices, where that sum goes from i equal 1 to 10. Okay, easy. Sample standard deviation. Now, before we calculate that, let's write down the formula. That is the square root of the variance, the sample variance, and the sample variance is 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of all pi's minus the average. So all we see is the uh, underneath the square root is the sample variance and taking the square root will give us the sample standard deviation. So let's do that in Excel. What we need is a column p minus p bar or price minus p bar and take the price minus the mean here, that's p bar, we need to fix that with the dollar signs and we can copy that down. So let's see, we've got the price minus p bar, that's fine. Now we need the square of that, so p minus p bar the square, that's pretty easy. Is that squared? And then we take the sum of this. take, so let's calculate S squared, the sample variance first, so we take the sum and we divide by n minus 1, that would be 9, and we divide by 9, and if we want S, we just take the square root of that result. Here we go, 3.765, so we have the result here as 3.765. There we go. So that is part one. Part two, calculate the weighted mean. Choose a different color here. So we want the weighted mean. So that's part two. What does that mean? You can see we have these different petrol stations but some are bigger than others, so let's find the biggest one. I think the biggest, ones, biggest one is here, it has a market share for almost a quarter. That's another one with 20% market share. Here we have 17, but then we have others which are pretty small. That one, that one here, this one, they have pretty small sample share. So if you think of the amount of petrol which is being, uh, being bought, quite a lot 
of that is being bought at a price of 128 pence or 134 pence less is bought at 141 pence so how do we calculate the weighted sample mean let's do it at the first we'll figure out what we need to do let's call it now and what we need is the sum of all the weights times all the prices and these sums here, these weights, they will sum to 1 and they basically take the function of that 1 over n so we don't have a factor, factor in front of here so it's just the sum of wi times pi now what do we use as weights? well we use these market shares so we use the market share as the wi's so let's go to excel and do this so what we want is basically a share times price so let's calculate that for each so we have the price times times the share copy that down and now all we need is the sum of all these and what we get is 132.6 so the result here is going to be a hundred and thirty. Oh yeah, that was a three. A hundred and thirty-two point six. And you can see these averages are quite different. And what that tells us is that the there's a tendency of the bigger petrol stations to sell the petrol cheaper. Because if we weight by the market share, we get a smaller average than if we were to use the unweighted, unweighted average. So that was question three. And question two, let's go to question three. Here the question is calculate the sample mean. That's right, here we go. Calculate the sample mean and standard deviation, but for the price per gallon. So, so we asked to calculate the uh, mean price per gallon, the standard deviation of the price for per gallon. We first need to figure out how gallons and liters are related to each other. So the, the question is how many, let's call that x, liters are equal to one gallon and uh, we're going to ask our uh, friend Wikipedia I pulled up the Wikipedia page for gallon and here you can see that one imperial gallon is equal to 4.5 uh, 4.546 liters now easy well actually not quite as easy because there's also what's called the US customary liquid gallon which is 3.79 liters and the US dry gallon which is approximately 4.4 liters so what you know what question is that not well formulated at least not precise let's use the imperial gallon 4.546 so what we so we know that we have 4.546 liters are equal to one gallon. So let's create this new random variable. We'll call it call it G, and that is basically the same as 4.546 times P which is the price per liter. So the price per gallon is going to be 4.546 times the price per liter. Now, you perhaps remember, or if you think about what, what's going to happen to the, uh, to the P, so if you now want to calculate G bar, that is basically the same as 4.546 times PI, because that's going to be GI. And that factor, 4.546, is just going to move in front 
of the equation. But it's possibly easier to remember something which you may only do later if you do this website chronologically. But we know that the expected value of A times P, where P is the random variable and A is a factor, is the same as A times the expected value of PI. Okay? And that means that if you want the expected value or the sample equivalent, the sample mean for G, what we need is, so G bar is just going to be 4.546 times P bar. And you can calculate that yourself, that is 4.546 times 138.4. Okay, I'll leave that up to you. And what about the uh, standard deviation? Now what we want here is we need to remember the following. If we think about the variance, the variance of A times PI is going to be the same as A squared times the variance of PI. So how do we solve this question then? What is the standard deviation of the variable g? Now, that is going to be the square root of the variance of g. Now, the variance of g is just going to be a squared times the variance of p. So we have a is the square root of a squared times the variance of p. Okay, and we calculated that sort of. Okay. What we want is what we calculated up here is the sample variance of p. So we have this this guy here, so we want to bring that a outside. And we can do that. That is just gonna be a times the square root of the sample variance of P. And that means the sample variance of G is just going to be 4.546 4.546 times the, the standard deviation which we calculated for P beforehand that is 3.765. And again, I'll leave it up to you to calculate the exact numerical value of this. Okay, that's question one.